Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we do have a very interesting evening this evening for you. Uh, starting going back a little bit in time there, where we shared a video with you here on uh, Israeli News Live, where Putin calls the United States an imperialistic nation, uh, going around the world conquering other nations and different regions and all the different bases the U.S. has around the world. And even during this interview that he did, uh, RT News carried this, he also says that the U.S., uh, or, or excuse me, he said that there were partners of theirs that were involved in the buying in, uh, of the oil by ISIS or ISIL there in from Syria, where they have control of the oil fields there in Syria. Now, this was before Putin actually stepped up and come to Basra Assad's uh, uh, aid there in, the, in Syria in helping this, uh, this fight against ISIS. And of course, if anyone has done any damage to ISIS or ISIL in this case here, it has certainly been Russia. The United States has only been playing around with ISIS in the entire time trying to topple the uh, Basra al-Assad regime there of Syria, the president of Syria. And uh, Putin was finally just really fed up with this and of course but to protect his own interests because also Putin has an interest as well, especially in Israel's northern uh, part there in the Golan, which was uh, part of uh, under Syrian control before Israel won it in 1967 war and as well as he has the, uh, the oil agreement back in January 2014 with uh, Mahmoud Abbas of the West Bank there. So he has to be in the region as well for his own interest in the oil fields there. But recently, there has been several different news broadcasts that brought this out, but I was looking at Sputnik uh, News, uh, CNN News has carried this, a lot of other different ones there, that France conducts airstrikes on ISIL oil facilities in Syria. Okay, the French Air Force has carried out its second airstrike in 48 hours on an oil facility controlled by the Islamic State Jihadist Group in Syria, the country's defense ministry said Tuesday. According to the French ministry, the targets of the two airstrikes launched overnight were oil pumping stations in neighborhoods of the Syrian city of Del El Zor. Uh, our objective, objective is to weaken the financial potential of ISIS by disrupting operations of oil facilities in the area that are controlled by the terrorist group, the ministry said in a statement. What a statement of hypocrisy, though. Now, before we go into the hypocrisy of this, let me just share with you something that the, uh, the, the media for the United States has been trying to push. This here is on the Business Insider, Military and Defense. Let's look at what they're saying here. This, was, this came out on March 7th of 2015, revealed the oil middleman between the Syrian regime and ISIS. Okay, the Syrian business described as the middleman for the oil fields or the oil deals between ISIS and Bashar al-Assad's regime will be targeted for European Union sanctions on Saturday. The listing of George Haswani, the owner of Hesco Engineering Company, sheds uh, more light on the financial links between Syria's regime and the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, ISIS or ISIL as you might call them. Uh, in public, the two belligerents claim to be sworn enemies. ISIL has vowed to topple Mr. Assad and transform Syria into an Islamic caliphate. But the rise of jihadist movement, they claim here, has served Mr. Assad's interest by allowing him to pose as the essential bulwark against Islamic terrorism, Islamist terrorism. ISIL fighters captured the oil fields of eastern Syria in 2013. Since then, regime is believed to have funded the jihadists by purchasing oil from ISIL, but those links are understood to extend further than was previously thought. Instead of merely being a customer of ISIL oil, the regime is understood to be running some oil gas installations jointly with the terrorist movement. Well, you know, it's interesting. What you're about to discover tonight is the truth of what's really going on and why France has bombed these oil uh, facilities, these oil pumping facilities, one, to make sure they kill all the Islamic terrorists that are involved in this so no one exposes the U.S., France, Germany, and a whole lot of other countries involved in buying up this oil. Now, it seems evident that Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, already knew who was buying the oil. As he said, 
Sanctions are being put on them, but why aren't sanctions being put on these other nations who are buying up the oil from these terrorists in the region there? So let's take a look and find out just exactly what's going on in and around the world. Well, in August of 2015, it says German firms involved in selling ISIL oil to Europe. What do you know? This is in Yeni Safak. Uh, uh, article here, we had to do some serious searching. You know, Google just doesn't give you everything, does it? Uh, so we do, we, ha we have learned different ways of getting around that so we can find these articles to know where to see them. But anyway, it says here, Germany, one of the members of the anti-ISIL coalition is financing the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or ISIL. Well, so much for Basra al-Assad, huh? I guess that doesn't go over too well for the United States, and it's going to get deeper, have no fear. So the United States, I'm sure, uh, if you only knew just how greedy the businessmen are of these different oil companies and what links they will go to to make sure that they control the oil markets, cheaper oil, well, of course, I don't think you've seen any discounts at the pumps in the United States, and there's definitely not any discount at the pumps in Europe either. I can tell you that for sure. Whatever you pay in the U.S., we probably pay double here in Europe. Uh, Israel the same. Even in Israel, I pay double in Israel when I'm over in Israel as well. So there's definitely no discounts for the people there. Only the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. That's the old cliche goes to say. Now, let me just kind of mention to you, though, let's just keep one thing in mind here just to remind you. This is, this is from, it is a humane gospel, but it is clearly perfect in nature. Listen to what it says. Chapter 61, verse 3, for you shall hear of great wars. It's right along with, uh, by the way, with uh, Matthew 24. Great wars and also much talk of war, and many will be threatened with destruction. That's what they're doing now. But, and by the way, we're going to get into that as well tonight. But you, but be you not troubled, for many things must come to pass yet before the end of all things. And in those days, the last before the great rest, those that have power shall gather to themselves in greed the lands and riches of the earth. Well, the oil is the riches of the earth. And of course, you have to get the land as well in order to get the riches of the earth for their own lust. And thus shall oppress the greater number who have not. Now, remember... I just shared with you in the book of Micah, back, uh, Micah chapter 7 there. Maybe we go there real quick just as a reminder there. In Micah chapter 7, we find out that, uh, that, uh, that the land has become desolate. Uh, and, and this is speaking of Syria here. Um, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. That's... Bless the, bless the Lord. I actually just went straight to it, not even remembering what verse it was in. Verse 13, chapter 7 of Micah, verse 13, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. You see, what are their doings? They're, they, the greed for the oil and to push them out and Russia bombing, U.S. is bombing, U.S. started all this mess, U.S. created ISIS, of their doing. Who's the there? It's the, it's the Syrians' own people that have caused the mess with the United States. For what reason? They all, all they want is this oil. So Russia comes in to put a stop to all this, and now the United States hates Russia for what they're doing. Oh my gosh. Not to mention, like I said, though, remember, Russia has their own ideas and plans as well because they did make an agreement with Mahmoud Abbas. It's not in Israel's favor either, and it's a very dangerous scenario for Israel with Russia right there on the border. Not that Russia will attack, but Hezbollah will, and so will Hamas and a whole lot of other regions there, uh, 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 little countries there in the region. Back to this article here, though, about Germany firms involved in selling ISIL oil to Europe. Let's look at this. The report said Germany purchased oil from the terrorist group despite the European Union's rhetoric against the militants and supplied other member states of the EU by using two routes. According to the information notes submitted to the official authorities by the intelligence unit, the strong EU member Countries supplied oil taken from ISIL, who has seized wide areas of Iraq, including its oil-producing regions through Tartus, port of war-torn Syria. Germany also used Iran and Dubai as other options to send ISIL oil, which priced between $15 to $20 a barrel. So much for $100 a barrel, huh? 
and not even where they got Russia down to like $50 a barrel. Well, the U.S. is really making a killing, and so is Europe. Now, I say the U.S. because we're going to drag the U.S. into this as well. The report unveiled that Germany's oil companies working in Iraq and Syria conducted the oil supply process. Through the report did not specify any German oil supplier's name. It stated the big companies facilitated uh, by the coalition airstrikes operate the oil supply covertly. Let's read that again. I don't want anybody to miss this. Though the report did not specify any German oil supplier's name, it stated the big companies facilitated by the coalition airstrikes to operate the oil supply covertly. The report stated that Syria's Bashar al-Assad has a strong share to this oil selling as the Assad regime and ISIL agreed on electric and water supply to the areas they controlled. This is a mess, isn't it? It doesn't end there, friends. Let's take a look at another interesting article here. This is the National Catholic Reporter. French Catholics want countries to quit buying oil from the Islamic State. Why? Let's find out what I... Take a look at this now. I want you to see what's going on here uh, so you guys can see this yourself. This is uh, NCRO... Uh, excuse me, ncronline.org. All right, this is the website right here. Uh, and it is this is June 4th of 2015. It's by Jonathan Luxmore of the Catholic News Service He says here French Catholics have urged church support for a campaign to stop Western companies from buying oil from the Islamic State group in effect funding the mass killing of Christians Well, they are our brothers and sisters are massacred women and children taken into slavery while Christians are suffering the most so are, so are Muslims and other minorities, said Joseph Thovnel, vice president of the French Confederation of Christian Workers. As Christians, we're trying to record the names and ages of victims so they won't be forgotten, but we also need church leaders to help stop the persecution by reaching out to public opinion and pressing governments to act, said Thovnel, a Catholic. A new association, Novax Martyrs, prepared a day of action in Paris June 14th to raise awareness of atrocities by Islamic State and other, other movements. In an interview with Catholic News Service on Thursday, Thovnal said 84 members of France Parliament had signed a news martyrs petition demanding parliamentary inquiry into which French companies had been trading with the Islamic State. French companies trading with the Islamic State. Now do you see why the French are the ones bombing the Islamic State's pumping facilities? They got, they got to put a stop to this. They got to make themselves look good. Why? Because they just got exposed. He added that, he added that the association which he heads had gained backing from the Pontifical Foundation Aid of the Church in Need and said many Catholic clergy and religious had also signed the petition and sent messages of support. Okay? Article goes on and on and on. You can catch this on Israeli News Live at, uh, on our Facebook page there as well. But this is not where it ends. This is where we get involved with the UK, US as well. They turn a blind eye to the Islamic State oil cells. This right here, uh, okay, let's do the agreement here. This is on the Middle East Eye, uh, their website here. And it says here, we got a nice picture of the oil fields there in Syria. It says, amid the scramble for Kurdistan's oil and gas wealth, the U.S. and U.K. are, are tied to Kurdish and Turkish institutions accused of facilitating ISIS. ISIL oil cells. Kelly allies in the U.S. and U.K. led war on the Islamic State are covertly financing the terrorist movement according to senior political sources in the region. U.S. and British oil companies are heavily invested in the murky geopolitical triangle. ISIS black market oil cells. Well, what do you know? The Kurdish regional government KRG and Iraq and Turkish military intelligence have supported secret ISIS oil smuggling operations and supplied arms to the terror group, according to the Kurdish, Iraq, and Turkish officials. See, Turkey doesn't like getting blamed either. You see, isn't that interesting? They're going to make sure they're going to bust the U.S. and everybody else. Of course, they'll all say that nobody will believe the Turkish officials, nor the Iraqi officials, nor the Kurdish officials. You know, the Kurdish, 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 Kurdish uh, people seem to be probably the, the ones the U.S. were there to try to liberate from the Iraqis in the first place. 
Once British oil company in particular, uh, Janelle Energy is contracted by the KRG to supply oil for a major Kurdish firm accused of facilitating the ISO oil sales to Turkey. The Kurdish firm has chose ties to Iraqi Kurdish government. General operates in the KRG with the backing of British government and is also linked to a British parliamentary group which long-standing connections to both the British and KRG oil industries. Now we get the name of the company, see where the other company, where they didn't want to say anything about it there. All you gotta do is dig a little deeper. Kurds and Turks and blind eyes. One of ISIS's most significant sources of revenue is oil smuggling. The Islamic State controls approximately 60% of Syria's oil. Seven major oil producing assets in Iraq Using a careful, cultivated network of intermediaries and middlemen, the Kurdish region of Iraq, as well as Turkey, ISIS has been able to produce a phenomenal 45,000 barrels of oil a day, raking in as much as $3 million a day in cash by selling the oil at well below market prices. And by the way, they do require cash and the EU has been very happy to give them exactly what they want. But the sheer scale of the impunity of this oil smuggling network has caused local politicians to ask whether certain officials in the KRG in Turkey are turning a blind eye to these operations. Of course they are. Iraqi, Kurdish, and Turkish officials have accused both KRG and Turkish governments of deliberately allowing some of these smuggling operations to take place. Tensions between KRG and Iraq's central government in Baghdad are escalating over who controls production of the revenues from the oil fields within the Kurdish region. Kurdish officials see oil within the Kurdish-controlled territory of Iraq as means to seek greater autonomy, if not potentially total independence from Baghdad, whereas the Iraqi government seeks to ensure it, re it retains sovereign control over all sales from its own oil fields, which include those of KRG. Those tensions reached a crescendo when the KRG began unilaterally selling oil by exporting it to Turkey, bypassing Baghdad. While complexity, KRG and Turkish authorities vehemently deny any role internationally facilitating IS oil sales. Both governments have taken measures to crack down on smuggling operations. The U.S. and U.K. authorities work closely with KRG to identify ISIS smuggling routes. They're working closely. Yeah, they sure are. They're bombing everybody over there so there's no one can do any talking anymore. You know, it's interesting. Vladimir Putin knows all about this as well. He made it public. And of course, Vladimir Putin is not done as of yet, friends. He definitely is not done at all. Let me explain to you what's going on with Putin. Putin has been, as I said, a statement of sorts, like President Bush was preparing himself for war with the United States. Putin uh, says here, Russia to develop strike systems capable of penetrating any missile defense shield. Israel National News reported that they already have the missile. According to the Russian president, uh, this is what we have here on, on, uh, on TASS Russian News. It says, we we're, will be developing strike systems capable of penetrating any missile defense shield, Russian President Vladimir Putin said on Tuesday. We'll be working on anti-missile defense system as well, but at the first stage, as we have said on many occasions, we also will be working on strike systems capable of penetrating any anti-missile defense shield, Putin said at a meeting on the development of the Russian armed forces. Putin said the meeting would discuss the development of such weapon systems that would determine the outlook of Russia's armed forces to the next decade and will become uh, a response of the challenges confronted by Russia. According to the Russian president, the true goal of the U.S. missile defense shield is to neutralize Russia's nuclear potential. The references to the Iran, uh, North Korea nuclear threats only disguise true plans and their true purpose is to neutralize the strategic strategic nuclear potential of other nuclear states, except the United States and its allies. First of all, the nuclear potential of, uh, of, of our country, Russia, Putin said, uh, the United States and its allies continue building the global missile defense system, the Russian president said. Moreover, moreover unfortunately, he states, they are not taking into account either our concerns or proposals for cooperation, Putin added. Russia has been assured on many occasions the European segment of the U.S. missile defense shield is developing in the wake of a threat from Iran ballistic missiles, the Russian president said. You know, that's kind of hogwash. The U.S. goes in there and helps Iran to get nuclear weapons, and now they're saying they're having to put it there for that. We know better than that. This is all over trying to stop Russia from doing anything. Uh, and, and it's not that Russia really has any plans. Uh, you have to really think about it. Russia, as they said, they only have two foreign bases. 
U.S. has foreign bases in practically every country, every continent on the planet Earth. So who is an imperialistic nation? And I'm an American and love America with all my heart, but I certainly don't want to be known as an imperialistic nation. Why can't we tend to our own matters at home? You know, yes, we're not going to convert the Muslim world, but instead we go and we cause all kinds of problems in the Muslim world. We fulfill Micah's prophecy, chapter 7 there, only to cause all of the people in the Middle East to leave there. And where are they going? Europe and the United States. Maybe Obama is trying to overthrow the United States single-handedly as, as a Muslim terrorist himself. You know, I mean, th this, this is really absurd. But you guys have an opportunity, we all do as Americans, to vote this man out. Well, he'll be out of office anyway, so I don't have to worry about that. But the, pro the problem is, he's already caused the problem for the nation. And what will the next president do? Will they also bring in millions of uh, Muslim refugees that hate Western ideology, that hate the West, that want to kill Americans? Even the United States is seeing what Israel has been suffering with as well, and that's the attacks that are constantly going on. Let me just share with you some of those type of attacks. This here happened in Israel just, uh, uh, I don't know if this was today or yesterday, one, two young boys... 11 and 12 years old. This is on the tram, tram rail, the light rail system there in Israel. Watch this CCTV footage there. You see the young boy sitting right there. They're up there in the front of the car just sitting there waiting. There's a security officer there by the door. Well, they're going to take out knives and attack the security officer. I mean, for, for one, why in the world would they actually be willing to send their children out to do such stupid stuff. Is it because the children will not be, a, you know, get any crimes uh, assigned to them? And there they go. Now they're attacking. The, the policeman pushes back. Now the other boy begins to attack, and he begins to stab him in the back. Now the security officer is armed, and he's trying to fight them back, but he can't. So he shoots and wounds one of them. And once he do, does this, the one boy lunges at him. He pushes him back again. He finally has to fire. When he does, he wounds him to be able to get him down. And then the other one, he's able to keep it. He's scared at that point because he sees his friend shot. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy to say the very least. It's a tragedy to see youth so, so brainwashed. And this now is even happening in America. A Muslim out west in the United States stabbed several people at a, at a college campus. What do you think is going to happen with all the Muslim people coming into the United States through this refugee crisis that the United States created? There, let me, I will say this. There's many Arabic people that if they would just be left alone in their own nation, they wouldn't bother people. I do believe that. Not, not every person that is an Arabic or a Muslim is necessarily violent. I don't agree with that at all. You know, But there is the radical regime like any other case there. It's also like with the U.S. We have, we have radical regime there as well when we have people going out there killing people just to be able to take their oil, overthrow nations or whatever the case may be, sell it on the black market, and then go bomb and kill all the people just to make it look like you never were interested in their oil in the first place. When's it going to stop, friends? When is it going to stop? I guess not anytime soon. So this time, France decided to bomb them. And of course, the U.S. media is trying to put the blame on Bashar al-Assad. Maybe he is involved in it as well. I don't say that he's not. One of the articles that show who really did buying of the oil also links him in there as well. But the U.S. is trying to make sure that U.S., U.K., and E.U. are not involved in it. So, of course, the EU, because they're the heaviest involved in it, Germany buys the oil, France buys the oil, so they got to make sure they shut the people up that are talking. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.